Hey, this is G Butterfly coming to you live just to talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville. This is season four, episode eight. I'm probably not going to go in order because I'm just going to talk about what I remember. This is going to be really quick. But the episodes, um, if I'm not mistaken, it started off where it left off the week prior where the ladies were at the Galentine uh, event that Kimmy put on. And it showed where Destiny and Stormy were still kind of going back and forth, being real petty with each other with the, um, shit, I don't even remember that little silly mess they were saying. But anyway, one jumped up, one sat down, they act like they were going to fight, nothing came of that. You know, both ladies had to be held off. Um, but I got the impression Stormy wasn't scared. Destiny jumped up, and I think two people were trying to hold her, Tisha and Kimmy, and Mel stood up and just kind of told Stormy, you know, it's not worth it. Sit down, blah, blah, blah. But I think Stormy was getting ready to get with it. But anyway, they talked to Destiny. Destiny they let some tears fall in the other room. Then she laughed when Kimmy said, hey, I want to do a chair. But it was just all in fun just to get her to calm down. And um, once again, Melanie and Tisha going at it at the table with each other. Uh, Tisha's just not understanding why Melanie feels the way she feels regarding um, their friendship, which you can pretty much say is over now. And uh, I think it was last week she called her a bitch, which seemed a little out of character based on what we see on the TV show. Now, Melanie could be all around Huntsville calling everybody bitches, but we really don't see it on the TV show. So it was a little out of character, and I think it caught everybody off guard. But it seemed a little forced when she walked out the door and told Tisha to kiss her ass. I don't know. That seemed a little forced and strictly for TV. But I don't think anybody was going to bust a grape while they were in there except Stormy. Stormy looked like she was ready to get down with the get down. But anyway, that was over. And then I think it jumped over to an episode where Maurice had a meal for Kimmy in bed. I think it was for her birthday. Uh, but as we know, she was not sleeping prior to that because she had a full face of makeup. But I like Kimmy. Kimmy is probably my favorite character on the entire show. Uh, they talked about... Um, Jalen's housewoman now I couldn't understand why she had to put together a housewoman for her adult son who has his own home and she was uh, inviting the people to come over but this is reality tv so we know that it's only going to be the characters from the show uh they talked about why Martell could not come to the event and it's because um him and Melanie for the most part can't be in the same environment without fussing and getting into it with each other, which that's getting old with everybody. But um, Maurice seemed like he really wanted Martel to come. Uh, I think him and Martel has, have a very good relationship. And Kimmy pretty much said that Martel has a lot of drama, but hell, they all have drama, actually, except Kimmy. But they called, now I thought Maurice was being real, real um, messy when he called Martel and just the way he worded everything. To me, I felt like he just threw his wife all the way under the bus and she was looking at him like, you asshole. But I'm just saying, that's how it came across to me. Well, they pretty much told Martel that they asked Melody if she doesn't come, they want to know if he can come. Well, he didn't like being second choice. But then that's um, that's what happens when you have a group of friends and the one a couple gets a divorce, somebody got to choose the other. Somebody has to choose a side. And for this event, the side that was chosen was Melanie's side. But like Kimmy said, she, uh, Melody did not confirm that she was going to come to the event. But from the previews, you can see she was there. But anyway, let's see. What's the next thing I remember? Um, oh, Lord. Wonder with the rainbow clickety-clack boots going over to Black to supposedly shadow Marceau to learn a little bit more about the business side of running her food truck. Clearly, she did not come dressed to do any work. Um, she was late. So you could tell that Mar Marceau was a little perturbed about her being late because I guess that just set the tone for their interaction for the day. But she went into the um, into black with Marceau. Marceau took in the kitchen and said, okay, this is um, pretty much the ins and outs of the kitchen, what we do in here. Um, how about you wash some of the dishes? Because you came here to just kind of learn what we have to do to keep this business running. And she pretty much told Marceau she wasn't washing dishes. She had her nails done. She wasn't putting her hands in the water. Uh, well, Miss Wanda was just being full of shit. She agreed to shadow him. And, hey, it comes with the job. 
So that already lets me know she's not really serious about running a business because you're going to a business which we perceive to be successful based on what we see. So she, I would think that she would want to get with Marceau and just kind of learn it from the bottom up because he pretty much told her there are going to be days when you're not going to have anyone to help you and you're going to have to do everything. And hell, in a food truck, it's not like you can have 10 employees in there doing everything anyway. It's just probably going to be her and one other person. Well, she had every reason why she couldn't do what he was asking her to do. And, you know, he's looking at her like, ain't this some shit? Well, anyway, you know, that was her opportunity to start throwing her questions at Marceau. I don't know why she feels so entitled to know that man's business. I bet sometimes he just be wanting to cuss her ass out because I'm quite sure I'd be, I would. But anyway, I'm not on the show. But Miss Wanda, again, is full of entertainment. But she asks some inappropriate questions. And Marceau plays right into her hand. He plays into her aggravation because he answers her the way that she knows he's going to answer her, which is hell, not give her answer. But anyway, what's the next thing I remember? Um, Martell invited the Whitlows out and uh, Tiffany and I can't think of her husband's name right now. Well, they went to a place that was like a little wine bar and um, sat in the loft and talked with Mar Martell. And Martell was pretty much saying that the kids were a little disappointed, especially his oldest daughter, when they didn't make it to the book signing for their plane ride to Canada book. He uh, act like he didn't know that someone had died in Melanie's family, which is uh, could be true. You know, they're not married anymore. So he would know all of the ins and outs of her business. And uh, it's funny how every time he talked to someone, he always has to bring Melody up. But that's neither here nor there. But Tiffany was being overly messy. And is it just me? Or did anybody else hear Tiffany tell her husband, bitch, I run the house or something like that? When he was saying that he was going to Atlanta for the guy's trip with Martell and they were saying who run what. And it sounded like she called him a bitch. I'm like, mm, well, that's interesting. I just, I don't know. I don't like when I hear men call women bitches, or especially women call men bitches. And especially when it's your husband, that just didn't sound too cool. But anyway, she had an opportunity to talk to Martell and give him all the scoop from the Galentine event. And one thing Martell told her was, uh, Storm is not going to be Mel's friend for long as soon as she tell Mel any no. And he told Tiffany in her face, you next. So we'll see how that goes. But the part that was the most interesting to me was when Miss Wanda met up with Tisha. Now, I don't know who Tisha Stylish was for the day, but that shit she had on was ugly. That big fuzzy yellow vest, uh, now the crop tops and jeans probably would have been cute all by itself. But that ugly yellow fuzzy vest, no, nah, that must be some Alabama uh, attire because that just wasn't cute. And as we know, Wanda is never really cute. You, you know, Wanda's always hit and miss with her outfits. But I don't know. I couldn't understand why did Tisha have on those big pink glasses? And I don't know. It's because it was a name brand. That's why she wore them. But her outfit was not cute. But on this episode, it was the first time in all four seasons that Tisha looked like she was genuinely tired of Miss Wanda's bullshit when it came to uh, questioning her husband. Um, Wanda took that opportunity when she met her at the food truck. to Wait a minute. And back to the food truck. Why she was so inappropriate when she asked that man if he made good money? I'm like, damn it, Miss Wanda, you are just so uncouth. But anyway, back to the conversation she was having with Tisha. She told Tisha about the social media pictures of a male's back going around, and uh, it's implied that it's Marceau. However, that could have been the back of 10,000 men in America. You know, it would be different if Marceau had all kind of tattoos on his back, and it would be easily identifiable. But this was just some guy back laying on his stomach. And Tisha told her mom, you know what? It's been four years. If somebody can't come with better proof than this, I'm sorry. I'm just not entertaining it anymore. And Tisha looked like I'm just done. And she looked like she was pretty done with her mother with the questioning. And Wanda's just so out of line the way she handles Tisha when it comes to things like that. And I said, you know what? I just want to see how all of this is going to pan out. Um... Wanda loves her daughter. I don't doubt that for a minute. But I do believe that Wanda wants to see her marriage end. There's just no other reason why she would go to the lengths that she does to um, 
prove that Marceau is doing something wrong other than she wants her daughter marriage to end. But, you know, I don't know. That was just, that whole interaction with her at the food truck was very strange. And it just didn't seem like it came from a place of love. It came across to me as a place, it came from a place of, um, she just want to antagonize Tisha. She want to just place a lot of doubt in Tisha's mind about her. Hell, it might already be there, you know. I know Tisha hears some of the things that are being said about her husband, but I I just can't understand why Miss Wanda find it so necessary to hurt her daughter every opportunity she gets with regard to Marceau. And uh, did anybody notice Marceau's face when he came outside of black when Tisha called him? Tisha was at black, and then she say, are you in black? I'm like, well, that sounds sound like that was a crazy question to ask him, but, you know, he answered and he came outside. But when he walked up to the car and he told her, hey, and she was like, uh, can you get in the car so I can talk to you? He said, oh, so this is going to be a long conversation. And his, as he was walking around the car, it sounded like he said, wow, or something to that effect. But if you would have watched his face, his face looked like he would go with the bullshit again. And then it just went to uh, to be continued. But that was just my little take on Love and Marriage Huntsville, episode eight. This is season four. Nothing really spectacular happened. You know, sometimes there are episodes when it's just like uh, so interesting from the beginning to the end. This was not that this wasn't that episode. But I, I really felt bad for Tisha. I want to go back to that. I felt bad for Tisha because Wanda is just Wanda is a piece of work. And I believe she wants her daughter's marriage to end. And I just really hate that. Well, this was my little quick review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Let's see what happens next week.